Sorry about that, my memory card filled up on me and I didn't realize it. So anyway, back to where we were. Um, we'll call this part two of the polar alignment on the LXD 75 series for uh, man cave astronomy. And basically we've got our weight bar exactly north and we're looking at our viewfinder, polar finder here. And this is a great opportunity see if I can get my there we go see the little white mark here on this ring this ring has just a little allen head screw in it that you can loosen up and turn that ring and what you want to turn it to is to be in line with the long tail coming off of the cross so you have a reference point as to where that tail is and some of the videos that I've seen on YouTube, I'm going to not try to get into too much of a tangent here about this, but some of the videos I've seen, they're talking about you need to align um, the long tail to the north um, or basically straight up um, on a vertical axis, this, that, and the other. Well, I guess Mead and their wisdom has placed it to where most all of their alignment is done with the tail, the long tail off of the polar alignment cross southward um, basically straight down is where you align it to when you've got your telescope in the park position or the home position um, so you just basically want to take and line that ring up with your tail lock it in with your tail so when you turn this you have a reference point as to where you know where the tail is the long tail coming off of that cross just as a visual reference outside of looking through the viewfinder because at night it's pretty tricky to, to to do all this in the dark and you don't want to turn on a bunch of lights and everything else to mess up your night vision so um that was just a little tweak that i did that i thought just made things a little simpler so anyway back to where we were um when you look through you now see that the long tail from the center cross is pretty much straight up. So now that we've done that, swing our mount back around, realign to the home position, lock it in, park the telescope as me calls it. You leave your top just like you had it so you can see through. And we are now aligned back to zero and zero um the other reason why i told you to do that was you can see way down here that little white mark is very hard to see when you're on the bottom side of the polar finder and it's not very much fun so now we got all this set up um the one thing that you need to do and really take a lot of time on is aligning your polar finder to the head and basically like I said before what that does is that centers your polar finder marks to the center rotation of the head when you turn the head in what it whatever degree um, you know you can turn it 360 degrees you want this to be at a centered point and it's very tricky to do that and what you want to do and if I you know if it was daytime outside I could open up the blinds and I can kind of show you what I use but basically there's a house right across the street focus the scope up or the polar finder right at the top of the roof pitch and it had a nice good clear outline with the sky background in the daytime to where I could focus right on the very tip corner of the house roof pitch and when I, what I did was, when you look through the four lines that are there, is basically you start out with the center, and you get the center where when you turn the scope 180 or 360 degrees, um, what you want to do is when you look through that viewfinder, see if I can, I can do this here 
what you want to do is make sure that cross doesn't move. That cross stays in an exact centered position on a fixed object. And what that tells you is, is that your viewfinder, your polar finder is locked into a central position in the head. So once that's centered in, when you look through it, no matter what position you turn, that cross, that cross will always be at a centered location. Um, it's it's kind of like it's kind of like sighting in a rifle scope, um, in a kind of redneck lameish terms. Um, and believe me, it is very tricky to do. It's a lot. It's a painstaking process. It's a lot of fine tweaks. Um, and these these little Allen head screws that I put in allow you to make really fine tweaks with just your fingers and not having to fumble with Allen wrenches and everything else. And one thing that I did that I noticed through my painstaking um, tribute to try to align this thing was um, once I got it fairly close to being spot on in the cross was I took and moved the scope off to where the very far end tip of the three shorter lines aligned to the very peak of the house pitch corner you know so I had a nice sharp object I could align that to and when I turned it I had to dial in to where I made sure that the far end of those lines hit exactly in the same position and basically out of blind frustration what I did was when I locked when you lock down these screws it shifts that image ever so slightly and what ends up happening is you feel like oh well now I'm all way out of whack again I gotta restart and well lock it in get it close lock them down good and snug and then literally what I did was I took and I bumped just with kind of the palm of my hand just kind of bumped the the polar finder in whichever direction it needed to go once I was really close to being in center and I was able to actually get it spot on I mean just just dead on just by just just giving it a good bump you know good good firm just a little bump if it needed to, to to be shifted this way I just bumped it that way if it needed to go down I just bumped it down if it needed to come up just bump it up you know and I actually ended up getting it locked in without having to keep messing with those little fine screw adjustments. It doesn't really hurt anything. Um, you know, you don't want to take no hammer or nothing and, and whack on it. If you if you bump on it and it doesn't move, then it usually means you've got your, your Allen screws a little too tight. So, um, but you know, take your time, go through that process. That is a key to, to really making sure that your polar alignment is right. And now that you've kind of seen how we you know what you need to do um as far as using the clocks you know when you when you go to do your polar alignment it's going to be real simple you know maybe 10 15 minutes you know once you do it a few times you get the get the hang of it once you get this thing really dialed in um you know your location needs to be the exact same position and we'll go over that in another video um on how to how to set this thing up in the exact same location so it'll make the polar alignment a lot easier process as well um so once you get that dialed in everything else is pretty simple um one thing that i did do was um i downloaded an app on my smartphone and it's called polar finder and um it's it's just a, a simple app it, it was free go to your app store put in polar finder it comes up with on um, the app download it and it makes polar alignment a snap let me go get my smartphone and we'll come back and um we'll i'll show you how to how to do that polar alignment using that app